they haven't noticed my ploy of doing only two of the instances. I'm gonna have to do Shattered Holes last. Because these guys have already done it before. Botanica! Awesome. Interesting. There we go. This is the only instance that I actually haven't done yet. A normal proper in this character. And this was the instance for the badges, because it has like five bosses and they're all relatively easy. It's cool. Yes. Funny thing about these trash mobs, you really wanted a shadow priest here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Why would you want a shadow priest? Back in the day, not only shadow priests were really good mana providers in TBC, you just had to have a shadow priest for raids, like at least one for 10 mounts, otherwise, you were just gimping yourself. Bastly. It made things so much better. And uh, here you wanted, well, it didn't necessarily have to be Shadow, but Shadow allowed you to still have a healer. You wanted to mind control, I believe, the Menders. Well, yeah, the Menders, because they have this buff that increased your spell power by a really large amount. Like, a significant amount. Enough to say that uh, you would probably have one or two tiers higher gear before you would get that much spell power. And spell power was the shizzle back in the day. I wouldn't be surprised if that buff now gives intellect instead. Let's see. Yeah, you can see 295 spell power. You could either spell steal it with a mage or you could uh, mind control and buff everyone in a group with it and it lasts half an hour. Which Usually was enough to defeat the instance, depending on how fast you went about it. But it definitely sped things up if you had a priest. It was, it was awesome. There's also this poison which makes you asleep if you don't dispel it. Very annoying poison. If you didn't have anyone to remove the said poison, well, you could potentially drive here. Once again in DBC, you didn't really have a lot of these abilities that you have now, so it was a bigger deal. Now everyone can practically remove three kinds of stuff, so who cares? And can damage taken. If it was done as well, I would keep it. Even though he doesn't really do arcane damage, does he? <laughs> yeah, so that would be pointless. At least my buffs are back in place. But not all of them. The druid buff is gone. What the hell? I hate when they've introduced that nonsense where buffs just disappear. Keep forgetting to reapply them because I'm no freaking mage. This place is so easy to chain pull. The packs are just perfectly placed for a paladin with the Avengers shield. I remember pulling all this stuff like a boss. Really, everybody who tanked pulled this stuff like a boss. <laughs> These guys stun the tank. Groups of three, which you used to pull really fast. You had to be either really fast or really slow because of the patrol. This is not pulling everything. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> they had some. Oh, god damn it, I left Bloom the friggin' mage again. 
What's wrong with me? Wait, 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 wait. Really? Uh, 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 these packs had some awesome abilities if you let them live for long enough that made them pretty difficult to kill like whirlwind I think there you go a whirlwind which does a lot of damage for the melee including tank you had to run away from it basically because it's stationary so what you would do is you would kite kind of you could also stun if you wanted to it's no big problem Next up should be the massive trash pack of flowers, but it's not here, so it probably was removed. <clears throat> then these packs. Most of them don't need to be pulled, as long as you follow the left wall. I'm not sure about right wall, I always follow the left wall, and you need to, like two, three packs. Obviously we're gonna for some reason pull everything. Packs weren't much of a challenge, but what they used to do is they would uh, drop poison gas on the floor. And poison gas on the floor would obviously cause a lot of damage for everyone standing in it. And it was quite big, and there were quite a few casters, so you couldn't really get away from it that easily, per se. It wasn't trivial. It wasn't like, oh, I'll just step a bit to the side. Yeah, they actually effectively moved out. Not to say that it was hard or anything, no. Well, like this. You see? It does quite a bit of damage. 900, practically 900 deeps. And in terms of CVC, that's quite a bit. It happened to every single melee and you had to move out. I know, it depends on how fast you kill them. Right. This would be the second boss. Quite off way. You could skip him, I believe. I'm not entirely sure. But why would you? There was no reason to. It's like one of those bosses that you don't skip. Why would you? All you have to do is just run in and bam. He does have some funny mechanics. Spawns seedlings and shit and he himself turns into a tree and tries to heal them, I believe. Fortunately, he died too fast for to demonstrate his awesome abilities. It's a, it's a shame. It's a shame. Overpowered friggin' Oh, bang in TBC with pal and tanks you used to use spell power weapons You had to use basically a mage weapon if you wanted to tank because you just didn't do enough threat without additional spell power otherwise You wanted a lot Multiple hundreds Which was also a lot back in the day I don't holy shit. I don't remember how much we had exactly, but yeah. I remember going to Magic Turks and getting that Kale's weapon. Basically an epic from correct Magister's Terrace and it was like an upgrade or something. On my not really raiding paladin. Most of them with my paladin was still a man and stuff. And here we are at these packs of uh, many a nether wine douchebag. Even this paladin doesn't want to pull them all. Usually you would pull them one pack by one, followed by those dudes that are channeling. Because they all did quite a bit of damage. I don't know why you do it now, though. Cause, like, I mean, they can still stun you, I think, which is a bit annoying. 
Oh, they, they can also curse you to reduce your stamina, which is quite significant. About a third of your stamina being gone, that's a lot of health. Bam, gone, right there. <laughs> Look at that mage! Do you just take like half of the friggin' health of an elite with one shot? Friggin' overpowered! What is that guy wearing? It's, it's fluff, it wasn't it? Fucking hell, look at this. This is sunwall shit. Black magic and stuff. Pretty insane. This boss! Teleports! And does... Teleports back to his place and does... Consecration or Hellfire. Unfortunately, it was completely irrelevant for us because we're vastly overpowered you had to run away fast from that back in TBC because it did quite a bit of damage as you can see he also did a sig I wouldn't call it a significant amount of damage but enough to matter so to say so I would have to actually heal it I am not keeping my life properly today at all yeah, as you can see, there were a few stealth mobs in this corridor. Something that, if you see a, a, an empty corridor, it's probably full of mobs that are stealthy. Oh, time to spam heal the tag. These guys spawn death and decay. You could also mind control them, and that would just destroy these elites and everything. Look at that, that rogue. He would just took a few ticks, bam bam, a third of his health gone. Then the K was the killer. You had to do something about it. You had to crowd control it, or preferably mind control it and use it on the elites. See this effect of bubbling? Ah, let's stand in it. Two K damage. Two, two and a half K damage. Look, he stood in it a little. Look, look at the damage that they have taken from it. It's insane. In, in TBC times, this, this, this would have been a wipe. Just from that damage. Nothing you would have been able to do. That's why I said, like, Shadow Priest, best thing for this instance. You just mind control everything you want. I mean, you said this instance usually took quite a bit. Sometimes longer than 30 minutes. And this would be the next boss, which also teleports into there. So what you do is you tank it on it. Or not. Foolish fool! He also creates these mobs here, which you sort of have to kill. I'm not sure. I mean, if you don't kill it, it'd probably be bad, but... In TBC, because they do damage and stuff. Ah! Suddenly I'm dropping random... Crap all over the place. <laughs> hey! Right. And the last quest for the big giant tree in the middle. Oh, look at all this friggin' gas. Even heard the friggin' deck a bit. Alright, and this is the last boss. Warp Splinter. Followed by many a pack of many a flower. Unfortunately, they're all non-elite, so they really don't pose a challenge whatsoever. He will summon dudes during the fight, near the end. Which you may kill or may not kill as you desire. Usually nobody killed them, you just nuked them. I think he did quite a bit of AoE damage as well. And obviously quite a bit of melee. Yeah, and he's stunned. That's, that's, that's his problem. Stunned and did a lot of AoE damage. Made a bit healing interesting. 
Obviously now it doesn't matter. Look, fucking casting exorcism. This doesn't even care. Screw you, Splinter. I'm just exorcising you. Yeah. What is this? Uh, rubbish. As you can see, these instances dropped epics. They always drop epics, but only from the last boss. Only from the last boss. Alright, let's sign up for the last instance then. Oh, I was gonna say maybe share holes, but not yet. They're resetting soon though. In a moment. In 15 minutes.